Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial. I'm showing you how to roll a square, and this is in response to the School of Motion tutorial doing the same thing. I just want to show you a different way of doing it. Now, if you haven't seen it, go check out schoolofmotion.com. They're doing 30 days of After Effects, so new tutorial for 30 days. That's pretty cool. And this one is day 19 and it's rolling a square. And so, seems pretty simple, but there's actually quite a bit of math to it. And um, he came up with a way of doing it and it's a neat way of doing it. And there's lots of stuff you learn from as far as how to do expressions and rigging things up. Um, but if you watch the tutorial, he had said that he was trying to do it with trigonometry and couldn't quite figure it out. And that's what I want to show you how to do is how to do this using trigonometry instead of his method. So, but definitely go check out his tutorial. Also, all the remainder 18 days plus the, you know, the next 11. Um, follow along with School of Motion with 30 days of After Effects. Pretty cool. So, let me show you how to do it with trigonometry. And the benefits of trigonometry are... My favorite is it can be done all on a single layer, which means you can turn it into a preset. And you don't have to have any nulls to kind of... Uh, reference and control and things like that. It's all just on the same layer, which is a pretty cool way of doing it. So let's first, let's create a square. So I'm just going to bring up a new solid. That's Command Y on your keyboard. Let's call this square. And let's come in here. Let's do this 200 by 200. It doesn't matter what it is, but I want it 200 by 200 because it's a nice size. And let's give it a nice blue color. And there's our square. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just so we can see where this thing is rolling, let's put in a floor. So let's bring in another solid. Let's make this one more of a gray. And then I'm just going to move this down. And there is the floor. Okay. So now let's let's go in and Let's see what it's like to rotate this. So if I bring up the rotation tool, I just hit R on the keyboard and it brings it up down here. As I rotate this square, you can see it's not working quite right. And so what needs to happen is once this hits 45 degrees, that is where the square is at the, the most pointy pointing down. This needs to move up, but it doesn't quite work that way. I can't just keyframe it to work like that because there's some curve to it and that's where the trigonometry comes in. So let's go into this and start doing some expressions. And so hopefully you won't get too lost with expressions. I really like expressions and there's a lot you can do with it. And hopefully I'll give you some good tips along the way, uh, maybe some debugging tips and things like that. So in order for debugging on this, I like to keep everything on the same layer. So I'm gonna go to expression controls add a slider control, and this is just going to bring out my value so I can kind of see what's going on. So let's go to position, and this is the position is where I'm going to create the expression. And why the position? Because as it rotates, it needs to move up and down in order to stay level with the floor, and it also needs to move left and right in order for it to look like it's rolling. And so that's the position. So I'm going to Option, hold down Option or Alt, and click on the stopwatch, and it brings up the expression dialog box. First thing I'm gonna do is gonna write value and then end with a semicolon. And just put that down at the bottom. That means no matter what I do, it's always gonna end in this value. And if I don't have the expression written properly, it's not gonna break. So now I want to bring in some variables, um, bring in some data into this. So first one I wanna bring in is rotation data. So I'm gonna write a variable, just ROT for rotation equals, and let's grab rotation. The next thing is I need to bring in the scale data. And what the scale is, is well, the scale of the layer. And I need to know what the scale of the layer is just in case I scale up or down the layer and needs to still work properly. So SCL for scale equals, and then I'm going to pick whip the scale, but I can't pick whip the scale here. I need to just pick whip one of these values because I only need a single value, not an array of values, which is one and two right there. And then I'm going to divide this by 100, semicolon. Make sure you put semicolons at the end of all of your statements. And so what that scale is going to do 
is if this is at 100, then it's 100 divided by 100, so it's 1. If it's at 50, then it's going to be a 0.5, and that's a 0.5 factor, so I can scale things with that and keep everything nice and neat. Next is I need to know the width and the height of this, but since it's a square and I need to keep it square in order for this to work properly, I just need to have one of them, so I'm going to just get the width. So W equals this dot width divided by 2, and that's the width I want. Now the next is I need to turn the rotation value from degrees into radians. In order for the math to work properly, we need to see it as radians and not degrees, and so here is the expression for that. And if I, I'm just going to call this one r, and then instead of typing it out, I want to show you what you can do. And see this little arrow here? This is expression language menu. If I click on that, there's all sorts of things, and you can find a lot of different expressions here. If I come down to other math, it has this degrees to radians, and I can just click that, and it types it in. And then right here where it says degrees in the parentheses, I'm going to replace that with rotation. Now what I want to do with this is let's start to debug some of this and see what's going on. So I'm going to come into the effects slider control and I'm going to put on the slider control some of these. So let's do first the R, the degrees to radians. I'm going to copy that, stick it on here. And it says I don't have the rot ROT, so I need to make sure I have that in there as well. So let's just copy all of this, paste it in there. Okay, now what happens when I rotate this, you can see that that number is changing, and I can see what this variable is. This variable R is this. So let's go from, let's start at 0, and that's 0. Let's go to 90, 1.57. 180. So that's what's going on. And that's the radians of it. And But I don't want to see the radians. I actually want to see a little bit something else. So let's come in here and now let's add a, some more math to this. And I want to use the sign. So, so let's call this SR for sine of R equals and the expression for this is math with a capital M dot SIN and inside of this, I'm going to put R. Okay, let's take this as well. And let's put this at the bottom. So with expressions, whatever is at the bottom, if there's a bunch of variables, whatever is at the bottom is what's going to output. Okay, so you can see there now it's zero. It's a different number. So let's go to rotation. And at zero, it's zero. Let's go to 45. That's 0.71. Let's go to... 180, it's 0, and then it starts into the negative numbers. 360 should be back to 0. So I can see that this is working. It's, it's swaying from 0, negative numbers, and it's creating a sine wave. So if I were to map this out, it would be up and down, up and down like a sine wave, and that's kind of what I want. So to kind of add a little bit more to this, I need to write out the position data for this, and I need to do that in a bracket. So before I do that, though, is I need to get this position here. So I'm going to write a variable. I'm just going to call this t for this position equals, and I'm going to just pick whip position. So t equals transform dot position. And then it just makes my um, expression a little bit easier when I'm writing it. So now that I got all these variables, Let's start with a bracket. I'm going to go T, do another square bracket, 0. And what that is, is it's the position in the 0 value, which is right there, comma. And then let's do the second one. T, square bracket, 1, close the square bracket. And then let's close the main bracket. So now what's going on here is it's basically putting the original value back into it. And I can, at this point, close off that value. And so you can see everything seems to be working fine. Now what I want to do is I want to take this, this SR, the sine of R, and let's add it to this to see what's going on. So let's go plus SR, and let's times it by 100 so we can see a bigger movement to it. And you can see it's starting to work. 
Not quite exactly what I want though. So if I go to 45, it went down. I don't want it to go down, I want it to go up. And if I go to 90, it's still down. So it's the, the frequency is not as much as I want. So in order to change the frequency, let's times it. So I'm gonna come in here. Let's take this degrees to radians. I'm gonna put those in parentheses. And let's times that by two. And now let's see where things are going. Okay, zero is fine. Okay, let's go to 90. Okay, that's good. 90 is in the same spot. Now let's go to 180, same spot, excellent. Now if we go to 45, that's not quite where I want, it's down. So I'm gonna come in here to this, and then let's go the original, let's have it minus that number. Okay, that's looking a little better. but it's still moving down. I don't want it to move down. I want it just to stay up. And so what's happening, as you can see here, there's a negative number on this slider control. That's just showing me those values. And what I want is I want everything to be positive numbers. So I'm gonna use another expression that's called the absolute value. So I'm gonna come in here and on this sign of R, I'm actually going to put another one in here. Let's take this, put this all in parentheses. And then at the beginning, I'm going to write math.abs. Now let's take a look. Now it's starting to get there. It's a little bouncy, but it's almost there. So then the last thing I need to do is figure out the scale. So at 45, I want it to be down. And so what I've figured out is the best way to do this is with a slider. So I'm gonna actually come into this slider I already have here. I'm going to delete that. And let's add another variable. And let's call this one upscale. So US equals, and I'm gonna just grab this slider. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I actually need to move this higher up. So I'm gonna just X that or cut it. And I need it to be before all the stuff with the radiance degrees and things like that. Because what I'm gonna come and do is here, right here in this absolute value, I'm going to times this. So let's write US times that. It's not doing anything because it's set to zero. Um, but what I, I, I just remembered is I need this to be a percentage. So right now, if I go, you can see that's way more than I need. So I need this to be a percentage. So what I need to do is on this right here, this US effect slider controller, I need to divide this by 100. Okay. Now what I, I can do here is let's go to 45. And if I zoom in and I just adjust this until it's right where I want it, about 40, and then watch what happens when I rotate this. It stays right on the line. That's pretty cool. Now the reason why I have this slider here is because if I come into the square and say I add a round and quarter to it, and then I can come in and the same thing, I can bring it down, and what's going to happen is it's going to now work on that rounded corner. Pretty cool. So now let's make it move. We got it moving up and down properly, but let's make it move left and right. And that's where the width comes in. I need to know the width of this. So let's come back down into this. And we've got this, let's set this to zero so we can see where it's going on. And let's add some expression to this. So we got this T zero. I'm going into the first part of this bracket. Let's add plus W times and we're gonna do the rotation divided by 45 and put that in parentheses. Now what happens, what it's going to do is it's gonna take the rotation, which is this. So when it goes 360 degrees, if we go 360 divided by 45, that's eight. And so what it's doing is it's timesing the width by eight. But remember that width is half of the width. So it's going to, so this is 200 wide, so that means 100. So in 360 degrees, it's going to move 800 pixels. So let's take a look at that. 
and it's just moving it. Pretty cool. Now, since we had this, um, the original value in there that we're just adding it to, what that means is I can move this wherever I want, and it's still going to be fine. It doesn't break my position movement abilities. So that is how to roll a square. Now there's one more thing I need to show you, and that's with the scale. So if I were to scale this up, and what happens? Well, it's not quite working the same, is it? Let's put it right on the on the line so we can see if it's if it's working, and it's not. You can see it's not working. So we need to take the scale data and apply it to the rotation and to the movement. So first off is the width. So if I come in here to this width, and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in parentheses, and I'm going to times that by the scale. Remember that variable was SCL. And now let's take a look. And it seems to be moving as far as it needs to, but it's not moving up and down as far as it needs to. So left and right, it's fine, but not up and down. So for the up and down, remember that's the second part of this. What I'm going to do is just at the end of this, at a times SCL for the scale. And then let's take a look. Seems to work just fine. Now, it doesn't matter how I have this scaled. See, let's go down to 43%. And it still works. So that is rolling a square. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and take that mask off and then bring this back to 40. Awesome. So in the description, I will have this expression. I've got it neatened up a little bit so there's not as many uh, variables. And so you can just copy and paste that, remember, right into the position data. And if for any reason uh, YouTube won't let me put this in the description, sometimes it won't let me put um, these expressions in the description. It says it can't use that character, whatever. I will have a link to it where you can just copy and paste it so you don't have to worry about writing all this down because it's a little text and things like that. But that's how you do it. So again, if you haven't, go check out School of Motion. A lot of great tutorials there. And they're doing a cool thing with 30 days of After Effects. I've learned some quite some cool things just from watching these 19 so far tutorials. And um, I hope you enjoy this. A little bit about expressions. And hopefully it wasn't too boring. I really enjoy expressions and there's a lot you can do with it. And I hate to say this, but yes, I do use math outside of high school, <laughs> and I have, you know, I never thought I would be using math since I'm going into, uh, you know, video production and motion graphics and things like that, but I use math all the time when I'm creating these expressions. So that is that. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Just put them down in the comments below, and I will get to them. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.